The Art Institute's modern wing was designed by architect Renzo Piano, known around the world for serene, light-filled buildings, including museum spaces that are wonderful settings for viewing artwork. Most museums are limestone boxes, but this building has a lot of natural light in it, and that's what Renzo Piano is really known for in his designs of museums. Wandering through the modern wing, you'll immediately appreciate the spacious, airy galleries. But you may not realize how the building's design uses sustainable green technology to strike a careful balance. In addition to providing sublime spaces to encounter art, the design significantly reduces the museum's impact on the environment, while at the same time maintains the highly controlled conditions necessary to conserve artwork. We're concerned about the pre long-term preservation of the collection and we want to maintain an environment that uh, promotes that uh, preservation. And uh, in practical terms, that means maintaining uh, fairly close tolerances of temperature, relative humidity, and light levels. The solution was a unique combination of architectural and mechanical systems that work together to control temperature, humidity, and light. Because exposure to bright light can damage artwork, the modern wing employs a number of systems to filter and reduce sunlight to a safe level. The most dramatic also happens to be the building's most striking architectural feature. The flying carpet, and that's a Renzo piano term, uh, is a huge metal grid across the top of the building. It's a set of blades, so they're blocking sun from the south but letting light in from the north. Below the flying carpet, skylights and fabric scrims further filter the light. On gallery floors, photocells control motorized window shades and a sophisticated dimming system constantly adjusts interior lighting to balance with sunlight. Working in concert with one another, the light control systems provide energy savings by using artificial light only when needed and reducing the heat from direct sunlight in the summer so less energy is used in cooling the building. Extreme temperature and humidity can also damage artwork. So the architect and engineers devised a number of special systems not found in conventional buildings. One of the things that you'll notice on the building is a large double curtain wall. It has about two and a half feet between the two window systems, and that is all about controlling the temperature and, more importantly, the humidity. The unique window system serves to insulate the artwork from Chicago's bitterly cold winters and hot, humid summers. Inside, a network of sensors constantly monitors temperature and humidity in the galleries relaying that information to a computerized control system. Throughout the day, the computer turns on and off heating, cooling, and humidity systems to maintain conditions that preserve the artwork. As the weather changes, as people enter the galleries, they have an influence on the, uh, on the conditions in the gallery, so the system is dynamic and is constantly having to respond. We can control and monitor the entire museum, both old and new, the lighting shades, the fans, the galleries all through one central computer. The computer controls a state-of-the-art heating and cooling plant located in the basement of the modern wing, ensuring that each component is only used at the moment it is needed, optimizing energy use. All the energy efficient features for the building and all the new utility systems have given us energy modeling saying it'll cost us 50% per square foot to heat and cool this building compared to our older buildings. The benefits don't stop in the modern wing. When the new heating and cooling plant was brought online, it allowed a number of older, less efficient systems in the museum's other buildings to be decommissioned, providing sustainability benefits for the entire museum. The modern wing received LEED certification at the silver level by the U.S. Green Building Council, recognizing its green design and sustainable building practices. One of the things we were able to do for this building was use local materials, both Indiana limestone, which came from quarries that were close to the quarries used for the original building, and also the steel that's used on the bridge that uh, was fabricated in Gary. The closer the materials are that you use, the less gas that you use to get them here, and that means a smaller carbon footprint for the construction of the building. Brick and steel from a structure previously on the site was sorted and sent for recycling and the new building was constructed from 100% recycled steel. Located directly over the modern wing's basement boiler room, the ground-level Pritzker Garden also serves as a green roof. This calm outdoor respite helps increase green space on the museum site by 21%. The modern wing also adds bike racks, showers, and locker rooms, encouraging staff to commute in the greenest way possible. A lot of people who choose to drive to work send a lot of unnecessary carbon emissions into the air and 
um, especially with Chicago trying to be one of the greenest cities in America, I mean, that's a way that I can participate every day. The Art Institute's Modern Wing is a unique solution to a complex architectural challenge. It balances the call for aesthetic beauty, the stringent requirements of art preservation, and sustainability through green design and technology.